What's up, guys? Michael Everett here at True Trading Group. March 2nd, tiny, tiny green day for me. I finished the day up $46. Um, really boring action. Uh, I was red pretty much the entire day um, until my final take profit in um, uh, one trade brought me back in the black, and then I ended up finishing the day up 46 bucks. So um, really kind of boring action. So I'm going to take this time and rather than go over with you guys my trades from the day, um, we're going to go over a very important key aspect of my strategy because um, in my daily recap after market, um, I had a couple of questions from some members that asked me a very specific question about something called the initial morning high. You guys will hear me talk about the initial morning high a lot. Um, I, it's it's a very, very important piece of my intraday strategy, and it is a very, very important piece of data for you to analyze throughout the day um, when it comes to day trading. Okay, The initial morning high can really set the tone for the rest of the day for a stock. It is crucial that you understand how to properly identify the initial morning high. And it might seem that it, this might sound simpler than, um, than it is because some people don't know how to quite identify the initial morning high. Okay. Um, and I'm going to go over that with you guys now and I'm going to show you how to identify the initial morning high properly. Um, and then, what you can use that initial morning high for. How do you trade around that initial morning high throughout the rest of the day? Um, and the initial morning high is something that you wanna identify in a strong stock that pushes off the open and then gives you that first pullback. You cannot identify the initial morning high until you get the first pullback, okay? Because if a stock just opens up at 9.30, and pushes for the next 10 minutes and never really gives you a pullback, then technically you might say, let's say stock opens up at two bucks and by 9.32, it's at 2.10. Then by 9.35, it's at 2.18. Then by 9.40, it's at 2.25. And it really never pulled back in price. Well, then you can say that each one of those prices is the initial high. That's incorrect, okay? You need to let the stock push and then wait for that first pullback. Once you get that first pullback, you can then identify the initial morning high. Okay, I'm gonna go through a couple of examples with you guys now. So we'll start with this SGYP. Okay, SGYP gaps up in the morning and then pushes higher for the first three, six, nine, let's see, for the first 18 minutes of the day. Okay, the stock just opens up and pushes higher. Your initial morning high is put in right here at $1.99. Here is your initial morning high because you can see the stock gave you its first pullback. This pullback is how you identify the initial morning high because prior to that pullback, you might say, all right, Mike, well, why is that not the initial morning high? Or why is that not the initial morning high? And the answer is because the stock didn't pull back away from that price. The initial morning high is important because it establishes the first resistance point of the day. Okay, so you need to see the stock react how it would react at a resistance point, which would mean it encounters selling and the price of the stock pulls in. That's how you identify the initial morning high. Okay, so that's why this is the initial morning high in SGYP and not this, okay? Now, now that you've identified that initial morning high, what do we do with that, okay? You want to look for a strong stock, okay, that breaks through that initial morning high on an increase in volume because then you're gonna look for that initial morning high to act as a support level for the rest of the day. Okay, and that can give you entry opportunities and buyable areas, especially if other support indicators, other support indicators line up at that same area, like a VWAP or like a 38.2 Fibonacci retracement level. Okay, in this case, here's your initial morning high. We break through 
that high right here on an increase in volume. You can see this was the biggest volume candle of the day. So nice strong increase in volume as the stock broke through the initial morning high. When that happens, we draw a line across that initial morning high. You expect that to become support now. You can see we break through that initial morning high, the stock pushes higher, pulls in, bang. Support kicks in right at that initial morning high, stock bounces off that support level and then pushes higher for the rest of the day. Okay? So by e by being able to identify that initial morning high, you then see the VWAP came into play. This orange line comes into play at that exact same price area as the initial morning high. This gives you a very viable opportunity in the stock. You can enter right in this area on SGYP, and if the stock breaks below this initial morning high, then you can get stopped out. So you can set your stop loss. Hypothetically, guys, you can set your stop loss. You know, you always want to set it just slightly below because you want to give it some wiggle room. Sometimes it's not going to be exactly to the penny. So you want to give it some wiggle room depending on how volatile the stock is. So set your stop loss right below that support level. If it hits it, you get stopped out. But if not, it gives you a very, very low risk entry point for potential high reward throughout the rest of the day. Okay, and that's the example in SGYP. Now let's go to NKTR. Another example where I can show you guys the initial morning high for this. Let's pan in a little bit. Okay. So as we pan in here, the stock opens up and pushes higher. Okay. The initial morning high of this one, guys, is $94.63. All right. $94.63 is your initial morning high right there. Okay. Why? Because it that's when it experienced its first pullback. Okay, now this is not as big of a pullback as an SGYP. You go back in SGYP, you can see SGYP had gave you a couple of candles worth of a pullback. But go back to NKTR. This happened over, you know, two candles of a pullback. You can see we went from 94.63 and then pulled down to 90.51. So here's your first pullback. So there's your initial morning high. Okay, you look for a break through that initial morning high on a nice increase in volume, which you see here. Draw a line across that initial morning high, and you look for that to then become support. If we break through the high, increase in volume, here's your pullback, and then bang. Support kicks in, and the stock ends up pushing higher the entire rest of the day. This is why it is so important that you properly identify that initial morning high. OK, it's when the stock gives you its first pullback. That's when you identify the initial morning high. Now, let's go to QCP. Here's QCP, guys. And this is a good example because it really didn't put in an initial morning high. Okay, the stock just pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. This entire move does not have a pullback in it. There's no pullback in this entire move. This stock put in and its, its initial morning high an hour and three minutes after the opening bell. QCP opened and pushed straight up for over an hour. Okay, when you see a stock do this, there's no pullback. So the initial morning high, guys, is not until right here because here's your first pullback. OK, here is your first pullback. People might say, oh, well, Mike, well, why isn't this the initial morning high or why isn't here's a red candle? Why isn't that the initial morning high? Look at this tail. Why is that not the initial morning high? And it's because the price is not pulling back in. You're not seeing resistance. You're not seeing selling come into the stock. So you can't identify that initial morning high because essentially what you're doing by identifying the initial morning high is identifying the first resistance level of the day. What you look for then, guys, is in this case with QCP, you expect that initial morning high, that's your first level of resistance. So now later on, the stock approaches that level. There's certain patterns, okay, that we look for during the day, like a double bottom gap up type pattern where your target on the trade is going to be the high of the day. So it's important that you can identify where that initial morning high is. On the other way, what I was just talking about with 
when a stock breaks through that initial morning high on an increase in volume, you look for that to become support later in the day. And that gives you a real nice buying opportunity. And it's also very important in my TTG triangle pattern. Um, if you guys are unfamiliar with the TTG triangle, it is my absolute favorite pattern. I think it is the best pattern for day trading. I think every single trader, if there's one pattern that you're going to trade, let it be my TTG triangle pattern. Um, it's an extremely high percentage pattern and also offers tremendous risk reward um, ratio trade setups. Okay, so um, I'm not going to get into the TG Triangle in this video, but just search through the YouTube channel or search through the online courses on our website. Um, there's a course on just the TG Triangle pattern, um, how to identify it, goes through a checklist on what to look for uh, and how to execute a trade on it. And a huge part of that setup is being able to properly identify the initial morning high. And it's extremely important. Even if it's not, even if there's not a TTG triangle set up there, it's extremely important that you can properly identify that initial morning high. And I wanted to make this video just so you guys are clear, because if you're messing up that initial morning high and you're not properly identifying it, you might be looking for support to kick in in the wrong places. Okay. Or you might be looking for resistance to kick in in the wrong places. And you might find yourself taking losses and, have, and seeing a stock do something completely different than what you expect. And it could all boil down to you're not properly identifying that initial morning high. Okay. So let's, um, let's go back to SGYP because this is the best example of it out of the ones that I just showed you. There it is again, guys. The initial morning high after the stock experiences its first pullback. We break through that initial morning high on an increase in volume. Here's the break through that high. Here's your increase in volume. And then you look for that initial morning high to then act as an area of support. Okay, this is a very um, basic fundamental um, kind of piece of, of day trading. But you need to be able to properly identify that initial high and you have to wait for that first pullback. Okay, you have to wait to see where does selling step in to this stock and that's how you identify that initial morning high and you look for that to become support later on in the day all right so hope this video helps guys um practice it next week try to identify initial morning highs and in all the stocks that you look at um feel free to message me in chat and uh and ask me if you guys are identifying the initial morning high properly i'm here to help so i'll definitely help you guys out and let you know if if that is indeed the initial morning high all right, guys, take it easy, take care, enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I'll see you guys Monday morning.